was the purpose of Jesus Christ. That's what we're going to be talking about and celebrating in, in the month of December as we celebrate Advent. It was God coming into the world, embodied, incarnated, in Emmanuel, God with us, to draw persons unto himself so that they might know him and love him. God is consistent. God is consistent. I said at the beginning that Jonah ends with a question. Do you guys like uh, movies and whatnot that have really tidy endings to them? Everything's kind of wrapped up. I mentioned at the 845 service. Any, any, any of you all like the Hallmark movies? Yeah, yeah. yeah. All Hallmark, Sam Longman, you did not, don't raise your hand on that. You and I have talked about that before. There is no Hallmark movie that leaves you hanging. All Hallmark movies get wrapped up in the last five minutes. And you can watch the first five minutes of the Hallmark movie, cut it off, go do other meaningful things, come back and watch the last five minutes of the Hallmark movie, and you've seen the movie, right? You always know in a Hallmark movie the guy in jeans and a flannel shirt who is living in a small town where it always snows will always win out over the big city guy in the suit with the great job. Right? You know that in Hallmark movies, nobody ever works. All they do is walk around the little small town and chitty chat with each other and have coffee and enjoy the light, pleasant conversation. So it always happens. And in every Christmas movie of Hallmark, you know that no matter what, the scene will always end with it like this stuff. <laughs> so if you love tidy, wrapped up endings, I got subjected to a Hallmark last night. I know this stuff. <laughs> Watch a Hallmark movie. Every once in a while, you go to a movie, or you watch a movie on TV, and you as the viewer are left hanging. There's kind of a plot that hasn't quite figured itself out. Typically, they're teeing you up for a <coughs> Jonah doesn't have any tiny ending. God asks Jonah, do I not have a right to be concerned? Do have that great city? We do not have any answers to that question. We don't know what the next chapter, what the next season is for Jonah and for this relationship and this conversation that he and God have. And I want to suggest to you that the writer of the book of Jonah has done that with a purpose, with an intentionality to it. Because the question that is asked is really meant for us to answer. Because again, there's a little bit of Jonah in all of us. Is your heart concerned about the things God's heart is concerned about? Are you willing to extend grace to others as you have embraced the grace God has extended to you? See, those are joy questions. <clears throat> are you willing to be obedient to God but not with a secret deed. Not because you think a desired outcome of yours is in the world's. But you're faithful simply because God is faithful to you. That's why this story is open-ended, because it invites <coughs> us in. We are the Jones that this book wants to speak to. Father God, we thank you that you are sovereign, that you are gracious, that you are sufficient, that you are consistent. And Lord, just as we see you being so gracious to Jonah, so we're reminded that the Jonah's in this sanctuary this morning, you are gracious to as well. And for that we're grateful. And so, Lord, forgive us when there's not a little bit of Jonah in us, but maybe a lot of Jonah in us. And so, Lord, just as you dealt with Jonah's heart and spirit, so the Holy Spirit deals with us.
lives and our Jonah issues that we have. And so, Lord, may we find ourselves in this book and may it speak to us about what it is that we need to yield to, what we need to surrender, what we need to be obedient to in regards to whatever Nineveh it is that you have placed before us. And so it is in the name of the one in whom you fully revealed yourself, your purpose, of wanting all persons to know you and to respond to you. It is in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ that we pray.